today I get thousands of TNT to continue my quest for a netherite beacon. The emerald palace gets finished and the villagers infiltrate it and I build a new and improved gold farm that connects to a very cool bartering station with powdered snow and sliced portals. And what will I be using all of this gold for? Well, I'm going to build the Golden Mountain complete with a statue of me. Last episode, I spent so long building this that I used up three days I shouldn't have. Well, there's no time to waste. I need to get Notch Apple number 34. And to do that, I'm going to be flying far, far away, build another portal, get trapped in a cave, find some diamonds whilst trying to escape, and then search for desert pyramids. Here is the first one. And searching for these is also a great way to harvest sandstone. And unfortunately, well, I wouldn't say it's too bad, but it's, it's not what I want. And there's the second one. And as expected, it's kind of empty. But this third one, I almost missed it. It's just hidden like in the side of a mountain but will it be a hidden gem nope it won't be a hidden gem it's got a couple of that okay i spoke too soon i spoke too soon my third pyramid and hidden in the side of this mountain there was a notch apple i did not expect that and before i head back home i'm going to search the rest of this desert just to make sure i don't miss any more pyramids Sadly, that this one had nothing useful and i actually checked all the chests this time before saying it was rubbish will this one be any better and the answer is no so it's getting blown up looks like it's going to be the same result for this one and also this one and if i mess up this singular firework rocket hardcore shoot is over but uh, don't worry we're absolutely fine. And I've also run out of desert. It seems to be turning into a mesa. So I'm going home. And on the way home, found a room portal with sadly no notch apple. Do I just grab the gold blocks, you know, whilst we're here? Okay, maybe. We got it. Let's grab this one as well. And I have made it back home. Let's dump all of these items in here. Grab an item frame and add in the 34th not chapel. I've only got eight more spaces, then I'm going to run out of wall. And now I want to take this opportunity to grab some iron blocks and mine a hole right here. Okay, goodbye glass. Then I put down one bit of scaffolding so I can kind of go down here. And I've actually realized this is going to make no difference. Okay, yeah, the lava's, the lava's on its way down. Let's just block that up. And I'd like to build a beacon down here. And what is the reason for this beacon? Well, it's actually because I'm tired of never having swiftness when I'm down here. You can see I've got haste, but, but, but no swiftness. So I'm just going to fix the lava, repair the glass. Now to dig a hole going all the way down to the chest room. The beacon has actually activated. I believe I can keep a slab there and it'll still go through and I can use it to give myself swiftness and also place a bit of glass here so that it's covered in snow. Yeah, there we go. It looks very, very good. I'm glad that's done because I've been meaning to add it for like the last 300 days. And for my next project, I wish to change this entire floor to be respawn anchors. And the main thing I'm gonna need to do that is lots and lots of glowstone dust. So I'm gonna take out a pillager captain, place some others in boats so I can save them for later, turn on the mob switch, and then spend a bunch of time AFK at the raid farm. This should get me the rest of the glowstone that I need. I've been at this farm for quite some time, and now to see if I've got that shulker box of glowstone that I need. There's one there. We've also got redstone dust, which is useful. And I still need to fix this so that the shulker box sorter actually works. But I'll do that some other time. Instead, I'm going to grab some red and yellow dye to dye both of the shulker boxes the correct colours. And I've also been eating lots and lots of crying obsidian. Let's make all of the glowstone blocks, then the respawn anchors, mine up the glass, as well as the warped wart, and play down the anchors. Now to power them all up and the floor is starting to look very nice indeed. Now to craft a load more and place them down. Looking very nice indeed. I also have a bit more glowstone in this chest so I'm going to make good use of that as well. You know what I'm going to grab a little bit of extra glowstone out here as well. I now armed with lots more glowstone and place them all down. I've now nearly actually finished all of it and it has to be said it does look a lot better. So you know what? I might as well just get a few extra pieces of glowstone to fully finish it. And it would seem that we have yet another stray chicken. Well we all know what happens to you guys now. <laughs> I'm very sorry. And now to sort out my next problem. Some of you may or may not have noticed, but every time I open my inventory, where, where's my OP chest plate? I'm not wearing it because I've got my elytra on. Well, fear not, I have, I've watched my last video back and worked it out. It would seem that whilst I was at the bartering farm, I somehow emptied it into one of these chests and it went all the way through the storage system and, and I'm hoping <laughs> it's in here. Okay, it's not in that one. It's th thank goodness for that. And there's some other random stuff. Pistons, what's that all about? I should probably just empty all these items out. And I'm very, very glad to have this back in my inventory. And for those that are always asking me how I got such OP armor, watch 2,100 days. Last episode, we built this amazing emerald mansion slash palace, whatever you want to call it. But there is a problem. Whilst it looks great from the outside, <laughs> the inside 
Still got work to be done. So I'm going to grab a bunch of materials and get to work on building the inside. And that is this side complete. Well, it will be once I light up all these lamps anyway. And this side is also complete. I'm just going to add some stuff to here. And now since there are going to be loads of villagers inside this building, I think that it's super important that I make it as safe as possible. And now I think it's time that I create the stairs that will take you up to the higher level. It's going to involve those dark prismarine stairs along with these emerald blocks and prismarine behind. And it'll work its way up layer by layer layer like that. I have now almost made it to the top, just got a few more levels to go. And that is all of the staircases now complete. I really hope I don't end up with any villager casualties from this. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. And all that's left to be done now is this pillar in the middle. It's going to have some lights on it like that, then some slabs above those, and then lights like that. And with that, it's it, it's pretty much there. I would like to add a couple of lanterns to the very, very front and warp fences along here, as well as adding lots of torches underneath here to activate the lamps. And one other final thing I nearly forgot needs to be chandeliers in both of those. So let's get to work on doing that. The easiest way to activate them all will be to use redstone. Although I suppose just using four lamps would also... Oh no, we wouldn't have done the bottom ones then. Yeah, we... no, we need to do it like this. And then loads of nether brick fences like this. That is chandelier number one complete. And also chandelier number two. And I also think it might be wise to go do something like this. Just... Just for the villagers' own safety. Yeah, I'm blocking that up as well. Yeah, I, I don't want any villagers to walk back. I know how stupid they could be. It just simply isn't worth the risk. All right, I might decorate it eventually and add some beds for the villagers and stuff. But before I can think about that, I need to head back home, grab loads of grass and also dirt, and terraform this mountain so that it's not a massive floating building. And that is all of the terraforming complete. It looks much, much more natural now, doesn't it? And I would also like to just go under here and light things up so that mobs can't spawn. And whilst I was lighting up down here, I was just going into this cave. And what should we have at the bottom? A dungeon. Yeah, this is unexpected. Nothing too amazing. I decided not to break it in case it's of use for me sometime in the future. And that is Operation Spawn Proof complete. Just want to craft a few slabs and place those along the front here. And that's probably as good as it's going to get. I, I think that's perfect. Let's gather up all of the shulker boxes, fill in a little bit of extra dirt, and that is that project complete. I can move on to bigger and better things. Well, Maybe not bigger, this one's already pretty massive as it is. But also guys, if you are new here and you like my world, you enjoy this series, please, 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 could you subscribe? I'm trying to get to 4 million subscribers, but the channel Happy Kids TV Nursery Rhymes is looking like it's, it's going to beat me there. So if you're new and you could subscribe, that would be amazing. Or if you're already subscribed, please could you ask a friend? And then together we can win this war. And now the next thing that needs work <laughs> is this, the netherite beacon. I have got a lot of netherite blocks. I know it doesn't look like many, but it really has taken me so, so much effort. But of course, until I finish it, I will never have enough. And I've realized that mining sand, it's, it's just not the way to go. Instead, it's much more efficient to use TNT. And so that's how I'm gonna do it. You see, mining a stack of sand by hand, well, it, it takes, you know, it takes a good few seconds. But if I go ahead and just place a singular piece of TNT and light it up, as you can see, I get over a stack of sand just instantly. And so then if I find a good bit of desert to ruin like this, where the TNT are far away enough from each other, in a very short space of time, I have destroyed a lot of sand. And if I collect it all up, you'll see that really, really fast, it has given me a grand total of like, I don't know, 20 stacks? Over 17, that's crazy. And with this new knowledge, I should be able to get loads of sand and loads more TNT really, really fast. It's actually an idea from a viewer, so I, I really appreciate the person that told me about it. It's really going to speed things up. And I also kind of feel like I'm going to ruin this desert, and it's, it's kind of an area, I don't know, I kind of want a bigger flat one to ruin. Yeah, now this is the place. Trying to be as efficient as possible, so I've lined them all up eight spaces apart, and then I can run back along to collect the sand. Yeah, now that I have an infinite amount of gunpowder, this is definitely the best way to do it. Normally, it'd take me a couple of days to have got all this, but I've got four shulker boxes worth. I've filled my inventory, so I think the best thing I can do is fly over to this portal. Also, turn off these chunks borders are a little bit annoying now. From there, I might as well pop down to the EOL farm, grab a bit of gunpowder, and begin crafting TNT. That's shulker box number one filled up, and quite a lot is filled up in a second one as well. And now that I've got a bunch of empty shulker boxes again, I'm going to go ahead and refill them. I fear my TNT shenanigans may have May have gone too far. Run, little rabbit, you don't want the same fate. And that is another four shulker boxes completely filled. I have to say, the aftermath looks kind of crazy. It looks like one of those broken seeds, doesn't it? And one day, the entire desert will look like that. And I think that's better than looking like this one. This one <laughs> just looks like a mess now. Mining sand is something I spend a lot 
of time doing. And the AOL farm is still holding up strong. Look at that. Loads and loads of gunpowder here. And apparently I'm an idiot and I accidentally put the other shulker box of TNT into this machine. Glad I didn't lose that. It could have been a massive disaster. I don't think I've ever got this much TNT for ancient debris searching before. Two shulker boxes and, and almost a third one's worth as well. I'll just mine up a little extra sand for these last bits of gunpowder. And I also want to repair all my tools, particularly the flint and steel. And since I'm actually very, very near to the pillager outpost, I might as well get rid of one of these captains that I put here earlier and begin collecting up XP from the raid farm. More than enough time has passed and everything is now mended and loads more emerald shulker boxes have come through. I'll clear them out some other time. But now my main concern is ancient debris. I also need to grab a couple of bits of wood to make a chest. I want to place it here. The reason being, I completely filled that one up with shulker boxes more or less. Now we've got more room for empty ones. And next I'm going to head back to the nether, dig all the way down to level 12, and create a really massive, massive long tunnel. When you combine all my TNT together, I have about 4,800 TNT. And all I know is that's going to get me so, so much ancient debris. Looks like we've crossed into one of these tunnels that I made some other time. But don't worry, I'm just going to ignore it and keep on going. Whilst digging this very, very long tunnel, found a couple of pieces of ancient debris already. Better chuck out some stuff so I can actually pick them up. It would be a tragedy if I couldn't. So far this tunnel is 800 blocks long, but that's, that's nowhere near enough. Over 5,000 is the goal. And another piece here as well. Things really are going swimmingly. And after over a thousand blocks, we've come to a basalt delta, so I think the best idea is to kind of turn a corner and mine now in this direction. And this right here is piece number four. And I seem to keep running into lava on this way. So I'm going to start lining it up with TNT. And now I've reached the end of my tunnel, I'm going to dig the other way. Now that I seem to have reached another very difficult lava dead end, I'll place even more TNT. Oh dear, oh dear, it's... <laughs> Seems to be blowing up a little bit prematurely. But now let's get all the rest of it blown up and start collecting the ancient debris. Look at that. One, two, three, and there's one up there. It is really just so satisfying to go around and collect up loads of the ancient debris. I have to say, all this lava is making it very annoying, but I'm finding it. There was just a few sections with a lot of lava caves en route. And now that we're coming to the part where there's broken chains in my TNT, I think it'll be a good idea to go into me in the chest, grab this shulker box right here, then get the infinity flame bow along with some arrows, and I can shoot the TNT to light it up. And that in turn will reveal more ancient debris. Right here, we've got a perfect staircase of three pieces, which will get me 36. And with 36 ancient debris, that is the equivalent of one netherite block. It's a good step, but there's still a long way to go. I always find it so strange when you find an ancient debris inside a basalt delta. It feels like it shouldn't belong there. The colour of it seems to fit a lot better with the red netherrack. And you also apparently have no idea what's behind one of those netheracks when you mine it, because there always seems to be lava. Thankfully, this four pieces right here seems much safer. It's not often you find four pieces together either. And now I've managed to collect up a grand total of 64 ancient debris. And there's still more to be found. And the end of my massive TNT tunnel has been reached. The total amount of ancient debris I've got from this is 89 pieces. That is so, so much. But I'm not done just yet. Now I'm going to dig an even bigger tunnel and place down all the TNT I have left in the shulker boxes, my inventory. I've got loads of it to go. I've been busy. I spent hours digging a massive tunnel that's thousands of blocks long. Now it's time to clear a bunch of space in my inventory. Add all this quartz ore into here. I have been mining the quartz where I need to repair my pickaxe. Then I can grab loads and loads of TNT and begin placing it all down. This might take a while. <laughs> Sounds like something has set off the explosions and the, the TNT, yep, there it is coming off after me. I'd better get moving. There we go, okay. It, it's caught up. Look at that ancient debris already, but we're going to carry on. This tunnel is so long, I even went through a basalt delta, which, which took a lot longer to mine and probably won't be as good for finding ancient debris. But it's still not going to stop me from blowing it up. In fact, I'm not going to leave any gaps with this TNT because I'd probably want it to blow up a bigger area. And now we're back to the good old nether act, so I'm just going to go back to the two in a row kind of ones. Something tells me it is not... <laughs> Gonna be a good day for that piglin. You know what, just have the satisfaction of uh, watching it. <laughs> Sounds kind of evil, but I'm blowing it up. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> Blown to smithereens. I'll teach him to get angry just because I'm not wearing gold. And we're now on day three, 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 three. We've not had one of those since day two, 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 two. Uh oh, it's blown up. I've just realized I've just gone past some ancient debris that I must have had when mining. Uh oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it revealed a bit more though. Well, that's a happy day's moment. Three here in total. But I did very nearly get blown to smithereens. Believe it or not, it seems that the tunnel is longer than the amount of TNT I have because that's that's the last of it. So let's set it off. That's a shame I didn't bring more. Hold on a second. I was wrong. <laughs> There's more in this shulker box. Okay, we, 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 we can we carry on then. A little bit more ancient debris in the roof there too. And as it happens, I've made it to the end with a bit of TNT to spare. Yeah, like nearly two stacks. I have to remove a bit of this lava and create a way for me to escape. So that when I blow this up, <laughs> I don't get blown up as well with it. I, I hope that this will be safe. Yeah, look at it go. Okay, now we can get a load and load of... Okay, that was a mistake. Let's put my elytra on. And as I was saying, I can get loads and loads 
of ancient debris. And is it a problem that the TNT just stops every now and again? Well, no, no, it's not. Because whilst I'm mining that, that's all blowing up. And so far, I've got just over two stacks of ancient debris. And I probably won't find quite as much in the basalt delta, but hey, there's still some around here. And that was a vein of two. And there's another one just here. And it is actually a lot easier to spot because of the colour contrast. This is also a great way to collect up loads of basalt. I might as well be putting this into here. It'll all be very useful for extending my nether hub. But yeah, I have noticed you definitely find a lot less ancient debris when you are in the basalt desert. And can I please just get out of this lava? That, that would be nice. You can tell I've got too overconfident in this world when I just willingly jump into lava. But yeah, with armor like this, it's, it, it, it does make me pretty safe. And now that I'm back in the netherrack area, I'm finding lots of ancient debris much, much faster. I've still got loads of this tunnel to go, and we're up to over three stacks. And look at that, I have now reached four stacks, and I, uh, I can't fit this poor little piece of ancient debris. I'm sorry, but netherrack, you've got to go. Sad thing is, by the time I finish, that's only going to be worth about seven netherite blocks. It's, it's so hard, but I still won't stop until this quest is complete. With four and a half stacks, we're now re-entering a basalt delta. And if my memory serves me correctly, that means we haven't got too long until we reach the end of the tunnel. At least I hope that's the case, because I've been exploring it for ages. And after getting a grand total of four stacks and 63 blocks of ancient debris, the end of the tunnel has been reached. And I guess the fastest way to get back is just going to be to fly through, which is actually going to be quite fun. And it's also an interesting challenge trying to navigate past. Yeah, it's not fun when you're just going through lava, I suppose. But all the time, it's just a bit of skill, yeah. Look at this, it's great practice for me in my quest to get better with the elytra. And you never know, I might spot an extra piece or two of ancient debris that I've missed on the way back. Although so far there's not been any sign of any of them. Oh, I think the total might be going here. Quick, alpha heart, come on. Yeah, there goes the total. <laughs> Sorry, it gives you fire resistance, so there's nothing to worry about. But just to be safe, I'd better get another one out of here before I let anything else happen. And with fire resistance, travelling back is way easier. I can just fly through the lava. And now I'm going to dig a bit more of a tunnel to place these last few bits of TNT to collect up even more ancient debris. And the end of the tunnel has been reached with a grand total of 336 ancient debris. I've also found myself trapped in a massive lava lake trying to get to the shore. I mean, with this armor, as you can see, I'm basically losing no damage. Look at that. We're, we're, we're on full health and I've made it to land. But before I do anything else, let's load this up with more basalt. Grab some gunpowder from this shulker box, as well as a bit of paper. I craft myself a bunch of firework rockets because uh, I've been missing those. Now that that's sorted, I can fly on home and pop to my gold farm to repair everything up. Everything is now repaired. But as you can see, in all that time, we have not got much gold at all. And really, we, we need to do something about it. I need something that's going to be much, much faster. But before I worry about that, let's head on through this portal and get all of this ancient debris smelting. Something very satisfying looking at six blast furnaces, all with full of ancient debris. Let's also take this magenta shulker box, which has got loads of this nether quartz, and fly on down here so that I can add it to this chest. Yeah, now that's looking a lot healthier because I kind of used it all up on things like comparators and also observers. So nothing like a healthy top up. There's also loads in here for XP if I ever need it. A bit more blackstone to be added as well as, okay, I was going to say more netherrack, but to be honest, we're kind of full on that anyway. If I grab myself a little bit of red dye, this yellow shulker box can be made red and added to the collection. And I can also put this shulker box down, grab a load of basalt and put it all in there. Okay, not quite full enough, but it will do for now. And for all this ancient debris, I'm probably going to need a bit more gold. We've got all of these gold blocks here, so I guess with that... Yeah, we'll have enough. And I think I have a few, yeah, look at that, a few spare netherite ingots waiting there. But I'm still waiting for this to finish smelting. And now it is all done. Might as well use the XP to heal up my pickaxe. Then to craft all of these ingots, look at that, over a stack. Oh, it's beautiful. We make the blocks of netherite and we've got nine. Oh, if I had one more, four more ancient debris and I have enough. I, I, you know what? I've got to go for it. I'm just going to swoop on down, dig a massive hole into lava. Yeah, good idea, SP. Maybe maybe that wasn't so wise. But anyway, now <laughs> I'm down here in one piece. I can grab even more nether quartz ore and dig a massive strip mine in an attempt to find even more ancient debris. Okay, well, well, we found some already. <laughs> Wait, we found two. This is brilliant. I literally, I, I, I literally just dug out into this cave as you saw, turned a corner. It was right here. So that's two down and two to go. And two to go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's three that... I have just got the luckiest I think I've ever got with Ancient Debris. It, it doesn't get any better than that. Literally went from there, found some more here... <laughs> and then I'm just at this game. That has to be the best I've ever done. And people say finding ancient debris isn't easy. Now let's set these five pieces off smelting. Grab my nether quartz magenta box, you know what I mean? And put those in as well. Craft one more ingot. Craft the block. There we go. We got ten blocks of netherite. And yes, I know it sounds like a lot. But it is actually very, very depressing when you, you see them all placed down and you realise it. 
There's still loads to go. Although once the bottom layer is done, you would have to say probably one of the hardest parts is done and every layer from there will get easier and easier. And that is how I'm going to keep thinking positively. Now for this next bit, I've, I've got a bit of a plan. The plan is to turn my lag machine at the nether perimeter into a proper gold farm. I mean, that was has always been the plan for ages and I've just never got round to it. So a lot of you will have seen this. It is my massive, massive perimeter. And it's actually, yeah, it's got a massive lag machine, which is probably making the game laggy as we speak. Yeah, look at that. You can see it's it's really laggy because I can just fly up and up and up and up and that firework rocket is lasting for ages. So really, the first thing I need to try and do is is turn off this farm. And the way I'm thinking of doing it is just finding out what coordinates is here and then times in it by eight, which gives me a grand total of 6,784 on the X and 2,762 on the Z. And because as you would expect, the lag machine has completely lagged out my game. I'd better reload the world. And then somewhere around here, I'm just going to build a random portal. And you know what? Completing the ruin portal seems like a fitting idea. Look at that. It brings a tear to my eye to see it completed. Of course, though, it links down to a cave. It's just so annoying. Every time I generate a new portal, I end up 100 blocks below the surface. Anyway, it wasn't hard to get up because we're below an ocean. An ocean right by a mushroom isle. This is interesting. I've, I don't think I've ever been to this one before, especially since it has those cool azalea trees below it. Well, the, the lush cave is below it. The azalea trees are, are on it. <laughs> oh, now I know where we are. This is the place where I got my brown panda. It really is a small world. Well, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, I know I'm here now because the uh, chunk loader's right here. And this can be turned off. I think, does that turn it off? Nope, okay, that didn't work. I'll just break the redstone and put it on there. That should do it. And then if I work my way down underground, there we go. All the pigment that would have been under here have despawned. And this pit down here actually won't be used anymore. And I'm thinking down here it would just make the most sense to create a bit of an entity crammer. Since I don't have a very good portal set up. As the way I've set up the portals, I can't really get the pigment to come back through. And then use looting because... <laughs> I'm too close to the edge, so mobs will spawn on there. If, if only I'd have built the middle of this to be in another way. So yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of an idiot when it came to that. And you know what? After giving it a bit of thought, I think I'm just going to use fall damage instead of an entity crammer. This is going to be a very interesting design for a farm. Can't say I've ever tried this before. But hopefully it should also solve all of my problems. I feel like I'm going to be bringing so much kelp that it deserves its own shulker box. There you go. Let's get all of you in there. And half a shulker box worth definitely isn't enough. Let's fill it up as much as we can. For now, this is going to be everything that I need. Let's get this thing created. So once a mob comes through the portal, it can't go through another portal for another 30 seconds. So when I create this system, it must take 30 seconds for the pigment to get to the other portal. What is my plan to do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I'm just going to create a massive water tower that goes all the way to sky limit. It'll take them 30 seconds to float up it, and then they will go through another portal and fall to their doom. Looks like we've made it up to the top, and there's some water already waiting. But we're not stopping here. I want to go even higher. And apparently I've run out of glass. Thankfully, though... Hold on, let's get rid of all this junk. We've got so much, so much stuff I don't need here. And as I was saying, I thankfully have loads more glass in this shulker box, which should hopefully be enough to make the super high tower. The tower is now over 100 blocks high, <laughs> still not high enough, and it's going to go higher than this chunk load. Oh my goodness, what a mess. There's iron nuggets everywhere now, but now that it's out of my way, I can just keep going. And whilst I'm going, I might as well get rid of this bit of obsidian, as well as the droppers. And you know what? I'm just going to get rid of everything. Uh, maybe some of it's going to get wasted, which is sad, but it's all just got to go. And now that this final bit of obsidian is just about gone like that, we can get rid of a few stray pieces of glass, just those two. All that cobblestone that... You know what? I was going to say all that cobblestone there needs to go at some point. That some point is right now. I, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of it before I forget about it. I can grab a bit of a few items on the way as well. Very nice indeed. And now that that's out the way, let's try and fly all the way back up to the top. Wow, it's, it's pretty high already. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy that I plan to go like another... 200 blocks at least. I don't know what's going to happen first. I'll run out of glass or I'll get to the sky limit. All I know is I'm not going to have much glass left by the end of this. And placing all of the glass has been going well. Although I am now, unfortunately, <laughs> out of glass. Which does make sense because when you look at the size of this tower, it goes up to about level 280. Let's just uh, not die. So I'm going to head back home, fly all the way over to this desert, and start using TNT to get even more sand. I have to say, this bit is probably the most satisfying of all of it. And there we have it. All of them have blown up. Let's start collecting sand. Although I'm a little bit worried that maybe I don't have enough storage for all of this. I didn't really bring any, any shulker boxes. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll chuck it into here. So the one thing I can do is as I'm collecting the sand, I am also accidentally collecting up sticks every now and again. So sticks... They've got to go. We, we don't need those in there. Although no sooner have I thrown them out of my inventory and there's, there's more back in. Also, if I go ahead and jump into my ender chest, we can chuck that in there. In fact, I've got loads of space in my ender chest. I might as well 
put a few other things in there as well. This shulker box can also be filled to the top. Right, this is this is all the space we've got now, okay? I have got some sandstone, but I, you know what? I'll see how I'm doing. I, I might keep the sandstone if I can. But if I can't, then it too will be thrown away. Once again, I'm fresh out of space, but what I could do is take this brown shulker box and chuck sand in there. There we go. You know what? It's all about maximizing your space. It's a... Okay, I, I put something important in there, I think. Yeah, the other sand one. That doesn't need to be that. Yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, is it, to be using spare shulker boxes for other things. But you know what? It, it's worth it. I'm going to be able to carry the sandstone now and all the sand. I just need to remember a note to myself. Next time you go to collect sand, bring loads of shulker boxes. But yeah, now I'm very happy with that. We're going to fly over the Grand Canyon. It's like the Grand Canyon, isn't it? But it's the old EOL farm. And head back to my house. Now that I'm home, let's grab all the sand out of the shulker box that it shouldn't be in and put it into the minecart. And I'll also fill up these hoppers. And I have to say, by the end of this, I'm never going to need glass again, am I? And thanks to me chunk loader, which is constantly now going to be working. And if I just grab some firework rockets, that is going to load all of the chunks around this furnace array, which will mean that even when I leave the area, it'll all still be smelting. I'll do one last top up on all of these hoppers and the rest of it, I might be able to just fit into here. And bad news has also struck. We are <laughs> fresh out of coal in this furnace. This one's nearly out of it. You know, we're back into the troublesome situation. There's 31 furnaces here. And do I have any coal? Okay, I've got four pieces of coal and no coal blocks. <laughs> but lots and lots of coal are. Okay, this could work. I just nip over here, grab myself a better pickaxe. Well, a pickaxe that can actually get the coal. And I actually could just chuck all of that into... Well, I'll chuck it into this dropper right here. So let's just go like that. And then I can just sit here... And, and mine it up. That is plenty more coal obtained, but I still want more. So I'm going to do what somebody recommended me to and find a brand new mountain biome. Because according to the person in the comments, they have coal absolutely all over them. I think I'm nearly into new chunks, but we've got a ruined portal here. Now, you just never know with these. There's a chance of a not chapel. Well, there wasn't one. But you know what? I'm going to take the gold because gold is always nice. Even though I'm literally in the process of making a new and improved gold farm. But hey, when you see a ruin portal, it's always nice to go for it. Okay, we've got a regular gold now. But I haven't had a, a not chapel in a ruin portal one for ages. You've got to search like 80 odd of them to, to find one on average. No, what I'm actually looking for is something that's much bigger and much easier to find. Yep, that's right. A mountain. And look at this. It already has some coal in the side of it. If I just grab a bunch of stone and I can glide on over here and land on a block and mine up lots and lots of coal. And there is quite a lot of coal here, because look, there's just some down here. The problem is, is it just little bits of one? No, look, there's loads of them. And 31 stacks is my goal. Shouldn't be too hard, should it? And what on earth is that? That has to be the strangest place I've ever seen a tree generate before. It's literally on a little pole, and it's <laughs> it looks so bizarre. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that too much longer. It's the greatest tree ever. Instead, I'm going to continue grabbing this coal. Look at that emerald as well. Look, I don't think I've ever seen emerald inside of a mountain before today. I knew it was possible since the new update, but yeah, I'm going to grab the ore because, you know, the ores are kind of rarer than the actual emeralds since I can normally just trade for emeralds, but to actually get the emerald ore, well, that takes a little bit more effort. Look at that. More coal down there. And these iron quite high up as well. I didn't realize that was a thing. And already I am up to a grand total of, well, a, a lot of stacks. Over 11 stacks so far. And this mountainous area is just what I'm looking for. Look at this cave, by the way. How cool. I love the cave update. It just looks amazing under there. And Coal! Kind of pointed in the wrong direction, but there's a few there. There's also some coal right here. Whoever told me about this was right. It is really easy to find coal doing this. And just like that, I have already filled up the inventory, but don't worry. Blocks of coal can be made, and then I can continue with my mining. It's actually so abundant. Like, look how much. I've already got nearly three stacks again, and that was just from mining in that one place up there. Another ruined portal. I am... Oh, I was going to say I'm going to grab that gold block. Maybe I'm not going to grab that gold block. Nothing too useful in there if we just place a couple of blocks like that. Is it going to burn? No, it's not going to burn. Let's also build our way up here very carefully. There we go. Grab that. I've got another mountain waiting for me. Do you see any coal? Oh, there's some coal ready like that. Perfect. Nice, uh, nice landing. Let's grab it. Now, this has got to be the kind of mountain I'm looking for. Pure stone. There's absolutely loads and loads of coal on it. And once again, my inventory has filled up. So let's go and grab the crafting table, create more coal blocks. There we go. I have got loads and loads of them. I think maybe I'll fill up my inventory one more time. It's crazy how I start one project, then just get completely sidetracked and go mining for gold for like three days. And here I am supposed to be building a super fast gold farm. And with that, I think... Okay, it keeps going to the gold, but I was about to say, I think I have got enough... Yeah, I've got, I've got more than enough for my entire super smelter, like nearly four stacks of coal blocks, which will... We'll definitely keep it going. At some point, I do want to actually build a much bigger super smelter as well. I feel like it's a bit of a sorry excuse for a super smelter. And when I do eventually do that, I'll also find a way to solve my fuel problem. I probably would end up using lava again. And I'm not sure if I can be bothered flying all the... Oh my goodness, what is down here? Oh, wow. What a... It's amazing. You're just flying along. Amethyst geode. 
This is a I would build a base in this cave. Not come here for diamonds, but just look at that down there. Wait, is there diamonds down there? No. But anyway, my, my, as I was saying, I'm just going to make a portal. Because there really is no point in flying all the way back home. It's like another 8,000 blocks or something. So let's create that. Do I have my flint and steel? No, I don't have my flint and steel. But my ender chest does. No, it doesn't. Okay, it's in my inventory. I'm just blind. Nothing that you guys didn't already know, though, I suppose. <laughs> all right, this is an interesting... Oh, my. What is that all about? Okay, soul sand. Not what I wanted to see. Can I actually get out of it? I can get out of it. Perfect. And I've kind of come to a dead end. So you know what? I'm, I'm just digging a tunnel. There we go. Now life is much, much easier. Although apart from the fact that I was flying in that direction, I'm meant to be flying in this direction. But to be honest, the nether is a pretty difficult place to navigate. More tunnel digging is going to be needed. And of course, this is a little bit of lava. Why? What's it all about? What were the chances of that happening? As I've got more quartz on the way as well. And this area does look kind of familiar. And the reason for that is because we are now home... Sweet home. So let's now go and head up these stairs, up to the furnace room, which seems to have stopped now. Is that because we're out of coal? No, wait, has it just smelted everything successfully? I bet it hasn't smelled it. No, you see, there's some sand left. So first things first, let's chuck a load of this stuff into the system. Don't really know where to put this emerald ore, so I'll, I'll put it with the deep slate emerald ore. Now I can turn loads of these blocks into actual coal and start filling the furnaces. And apparently with all my glass, because I made it so it didn't go to the, uh, the chest room, I've really... Uh, <laughs> Jammed up the system here. Yeah, that's not good. Let's get this shulker box filled up so I have a little bit more space. And the rest of the glass can just be sent back through like that. You know what the great thing about this is? I've got loads of spare coal as well. And I can also, in fact, fill up the old blast furnaces for the ancient debris that I'm going to be getting loads of over the coming episodes. And all this spare coal can just be put into here. Let's grab the shulker box full of glass. I do not have a lot of spare glass, so I'm going to chuck it into this chest as well. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to grab a bunch of other items such as slime blocks. And you know what? Because I will be making a sort of sorting system, hoppers and things like comparators will also be kind of useful. And whilst this bit's probably not necessary, I am going to grab a few trap doors and also some turtle eggs. In fact, I could also... No, I've got the glass. I don't need more glass. I just need to get to work on building this thing. So the first of the steps with this is to grab a load of glass and continue building this chute. Realistically, it probably is already tall enough, but I always say it can never be too tall. Although it could possibly be too tall because they also have to build a portal here. So I think we're probably at a good enough height here. Let's go and make ourselves another portal. So here it is right here. I'm going to put some glass on top as well. Okay, well, we, we ju I, I did it to the exact right height then because nothing can actually go above that. Let's light up the portal. Now I need to make a portal that corresponds to this one, but I'm pretty sure that as long as it is in the same place, but just higher than the other one, it should be fine. Let's now go into here. We want to grab the water buckets. I think can we place that there. There we go. Yeah, we're probably going to need four of them. Or perhaps the easiest way to do it would be just to have two of them, but with glass above. So that's going to create myself, well, for me, myself, all the port. You know what I'm trying to say? Some water sources. Then if I break that one, it will go all the way down. And just up here, we're going to need a couple more like that. So they're going to be flowing into the portal perfect now to swim all the way down hopefully without drowning look at that i actually swim down faster than the water can travel so that's a, that's a win and from there it's time to go back into the ender chest get out the kelp and get to work placing it all down i'm not really sure if there's an easy way to do this which is why i'm just kind of going like this you know as i'm placing all this i'm starting to think to myself was it really necessary did i have to place all this glass and go so high. I mean, I'm not even, I can't even see the top yet and I've been going for ages. At this point, I still can't see the top. I'm kind of surprised that I haven't actually run out of kelp because I, I, I can finally see the top. I might just do it. I might just have enough kelp to make it to the top. You probably all thought I was going OTT when I brought an entire shulker box worth of kelp. But as you can see, it was very, very necessary. Now, I don't actually want to go too high with the kelp because otherwise, well, let's just see what happens. We can't actually go into those ones anyway. We're at the max, okay. Now I've got to get all the way to the bottom. And if you think I can be bothered to swim all the way down, you've got another thing coming, okay? Instead, I I'm going to try and... Oh, I missed! Oh, I was so close. And then from here, I'll, I'll just do something like that. Yeah, it's making a bit of a mess. Can we even place them back? No, we can't really. No. You know what? Let's just swim to the bottom. Then I can break all of this kelp. Yeah, that's right. And we're going up. Okay. Now then, was it on this side that I need to get out? Okay, oh, I missed it. I get a feeling like it's going to be a sad moment where all the kelp just goes through the portal and I can't reclaim it. Yep, that is what happened. Anyway, let's go ahead and break a bit of glass. Then I can fix this gap as well as this gap right here and head on through the portal. Ah, it would seem that it was all coming through this chunk loader. I didn't know this chunk loader was still in operation. Okay, that's not meant to be happening. Now it should be stopped. So has this just been collecting kelp? It's been collecting all sorts of rubbish. Yeah, come on out of here. You, you go. Right, I don't really need that. So that can go into there. That's There's nothing in that one. Yeah, it's all here. Well, at least I had a nice collection system to get all my kelp anyway. But anyway, this portal has got to go. The chunk loader is no longer necessary. And thanks to my perfect sense of direction, I can remember where this hole is. So we're going to go and 
carefully float down and then build a tower right here. At the top of this tower, there will be a portal. And this one definitely needs to be spawn proof with glass. And the pigmen will fall either side down one of these chutes where they will land on this platform and be down to one heart. And before I do any more on that, I should build this chute upwards using all this glass that I now have loads of. So I've actually just done a little bit of testing and I've had a change of heart. Because I was an idiot and didn't build the center of my perimeter over another way, it, it kind of messed everything up, which means I can't use two portals to make a looting pigment farm. So instead it just makes way more sense to take out all of the pigmen in this dimension and then use the water chute to send the items back through to the nether. If it doesn't make much sense, don't worry, it will do very shortly. So the pigmen will be falling all the way down here and the trusty pistons will be pushing the items down this hole. Let's do the same thing on this side. And once the items are down here, they're going to get pushed along this way. And from here, I'm going to have to create a little extra water chute. All around here is going to be obsidian with two sticky pistons and slime lime like that. Pushing it into what will be another water chute once I add the blue ice. Come up here so that I can craft some signs and also top up my water. And I found myself building yet another glass chute. But realistically, I think it's going to be easy to do that rather than get the items to flow into there. And this chute is also not going to need to go all the way up to sky limit. In fact, I reckon it might even be high enough right here. Let's light this portal and make sure it correctly links up, which it does do no problem. I can add signs right here and begin placing my kelp. And there we have it. Mission accomplished. All the kelp can be broken and any items that float up here will float into the portal. And I think I can actually make this portal to be much lower. And it turns out when I go through this portal, it's, yeah, it's a slight disaster. How on earth do I get out of this mess? Okay, I managed to get back through the portal. And yeah, I should stop being lazy and make this portal a bit higher up. Okay, this time I'm fairly confident that I've actually built it high enough. Oh my goodness, that was a, that was an interesting moment. Didn't expect them to still be angry at me. Is that two totem pops in one episode? I, I just use totems like it's nothing. But at the very least, it would seem that no pigmen are coming through this top portal. So let's get the water down. And despite this supposedly supposed to push you upwards, I'm, I'm swimming down through it. I, I didn't know you could do this. If I let go, look at that, it pushes me. Look at that. If you're in the corner and you swim downwards, it's, it's doable. Anyway, I've got to re-add all of the kelp. I've made it all the way up to the top. Now to break it. All right, that's the last time I'm doing one of those. And I can test to see how well the farm is working based on where the kelp's gone. So it has all come out on the end there. Some of it like just flown out. No, it's, it's all... It's all here, which is perfect. I was thinking I might have to slice this portal for the items to fall through, but I think they'll just naturally come down here and I can then push them together using pistons. From here, I've got a slime block that's going to push the items, which will have blue ice right here. This is what I've created so far. It's going to be an ice system that transport the items all the way to where I'll be standing. But I do need to get rid of this old portal up here. I think I've mined up as much as I can. I'm just going to put some glass on top of that to spawn proof it. And now I just need to nip back home and grab more blue ice. It is still such a massive achievement, wasn't it, to make that perimeter. It took so long. I would make another one that was better in a, like, in a better location if I could. But it already took me like 300 days to create the last one. <laughs> I am not doing that ever again. There's the blue ice that I need. In fact, whilst I'm here, if I've got any spare, I'm going to grab some glowstone. Look at that, we've got loads. The reason for that will just be to light certain things up to spawn proof it. Since I don't really want any mobs to be spawning in my system. This is about as far as the items can reach without getting stuck. This is all starting to look very nicely set up indeed. This is where my little AFK platform is going to be. And so I want these items to drop down to a level just above that. In fact, I might as well build a decent sized platform. If I make this go to about here, that should be more than enough space. I want to grab a piece of magma from the wall, which is what will get rid of the extra swords I don't need. And then hoppers along here, which will be going into comparators with repeaters underneath and redstone on top. And I also will need redstone torches, which I, I didn't bring. I only need eight of them, but to craft them, I'm going to need some sticks or wood or something like that. And I don't seem to be coming across any of that. And in trying to find some, I've pretty much flown all the way home. Am I going to take a tree or do I just, you know what, let's just go all the way back. On second thoughts, I can just get rid of one of these. I, it, it's a lot quicker than going all the way back. I don't think I'll need any extra items after that anyway. Although on second thoughts, I, I'm going to need to collect some string, which I have loads of right here. I've already got the observers, but some extra repeaters could come in handy. There's only three torches there anyway. Let's craft all of the sticks. Use... I think I can use that redstone. Yeah, we're all right. The rest of the stuff could just be dumped into there. And the build continues. We're going to need hoppers all the way along here. With hoppers facing into those. And then these will go into chests. Now that should all be fully completed. There just needs to be some item filters added. And since I'm only going to be filtering out the gold, I can just grab some from here. So gold ingots are just going to go straight in like that. And I'm also going to need a few nuggets. And any other items are just going to get burnt. There's no point keeping the other ones. They're just, they're just annoying. And You know, like smelting gold swords to get it to nuggets. It's just not worth the effort. Let's get this wired up to an observer. I think if I put a piece of redstone there, that should be fine. And then a string in front. When an item drops down, 
Oh, there we go. <laughs> it gets burnt. I better be careful about that. But yeah, it's working. For this one, I'm going to use two repeaters. Something like that should work. And I need to make sure that all of this is also spawn-proof. Same for these bits down here. And to spawn-proof this obsidian, because I can't really do it any other way, if I use glowstone, it'll be lit up. I'm really doing my best to think this through, aren't I? And that's all of them done, which means when I flick this lever, that redstone... Don't get stuck. It didn't get stuck. Okay, it's, it, it, it got close to being stuck, but it hasn't... <laughs> I don't think so. It's coming along. <laughs> Come on, redstone. No, don't pick it up. Let me just try that again. So the redstone has successfully got to here. And then what on earth happened there? Built it one block too high, didn't I? Which annoyingly means I've got to make all of this one block lower. But that's exactly the reason why we test these things. Now I can conduct attempt number three. Here comes the redstone. It's going along. It's not falling off. Okay, if it gets all the way to the bottom. And it's got burnt! Yes! Oh wait, it didn't get burnt. Even better! Although I do need to remove this to make sure that all future items do get burnt. Now I just need to put a bit of glowstone here and hook this up to a bit of redstone. This is just a very simple hopper clock that will just keep pushing it in and out. Let's just test it. Is that... I think it's a pretty good speed. I might just speed it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Now to go through one of these portals. I need to hook up all of these pistons to some redstone. Well, that's going to be very difficult with some random water. Where is this water from? Oh, it's from there. Let's just patch it up and forget about it. So these pistons are going to be connected like this so that they can be periodically pushed. So when I flick this lever... Yeah, look at that. We've got we've got that going in and out, pushing the items down. And this also needs to connect to those pistons, which can easily be done by doing something like this. And does it does it reach? No, not quite. Okay, I just need a, one extra repeater one second and it's pushing the items which will go up there you know what it's it's working everything's working the only thing left to be done is to test it so if i stand right about here pigment will be spawning and very soon look at this items are coming through you know what a decent number of them are coming through now then how's it looking in my chest down here is it filling up no not just yet but that's because this hopper is still filling up in fact i bet they are now filtering in aren't they yeah look at that we're getting nuggets we're not getting in there yet. But it seems slow. I, I, I feel like I've done something wrong. And yes, <laughs> this is what I've done wrong. Items are coming through out fine. That's working absolutely perfectly. But the idiot that I am forgot to hook it up <laughs> to the pistons. So if I go like that, look at how many items are going to be going through now. This is going to be too much for me storage to handle all of a sudden. <laughs> I thought, yeah, surely it's slightly faster than what it's currently doing. And indeed it is. This is now looking much, much healthier. And look at the nuggets just fly in. You look at that. The, the chests are filling. What will I be doing with all this gold? Well, I've got plans for it. I've got actually more than one plan for it. Yeah, this is all working fine. I'm going to AFK here for a bit. And just see how much gold it gets me. Just let me... Yeah, just get loads and loads. Plenty of time has passed. The drops are still flowing. And as you can see, I have got so, so much gold from it. Look at it. It just goes into all these chests. I'm going to have to clear some space in my inventory. And right here, I'll put a crafting table, a piece of glass above it to spawn proof it. Now if I start grabbing all of the nuggets and I'll craft them into ingots. I have to say, just crafting all these nuggets into ingots is taking me forever. Look how many gold blocks I've got already. And I've still got entire double chest worths to go through. And it seems that because I haven't personally aggro the pigmen, I'm not getting things like gold swords and gold ingots coming through, which in reality makes my life much, much easier. And that's pretty much all of my gold crafted that I need to worry about. We've got some more here. I'll shove the ingots in there for now. You know what? I, I think I can just shove all the gold in there for now. This chest is already filling up at a rapid speed because that farm is just working in the background whilst I'm stood here crafting. This farm really is much, much faster than the last one. Before we start the next build that is going to involve a lot of gold blocks, I want to sort out the situation of all these villagers. They deserve to be unleashed onto their new home, so it's time that I actually made that possible for them. And the first thing we're going to need is beds. Lots and lots of different coloured beds. You see, if my estimations are correct, there is like 50 villagers in here. Well, I don't know how many, but there's a lot. Just give me a second, I'm going to count them all up. One, two, three, four, five. It's difficult to count them because they're all moving around, but I think there's about 43 in there. And as you'd expect, 43 villagers are going to need plenty of places to sleep. So that will be the first project. Accommodate all these villagers. Probably going to be a big mistake, but I'm going to place all of the beds upstairs for them. Now with all these colours, I'm going to craft one of every bed and they can all go in a line along here. That's all of them crafted and I'm just going to, in fact, we're going to go, I don't know why it makes a difference, but we're going to be very particular about it. And that is how the beds, it looks so empty in this massive room. Since I've got so much lime wall, I'm going to make a bunch of carpets and create a bit of a flooring around here. I will finish that once I go and get more lime wall, but for now, let's go ahead and put a couple of crafting tables here and there. And we'll do more beds. And that is all of them done on both sides. And since the sun has now set, I, I think I'll have a sleep in one of them. Let's swoop on down here. Add a little bit more grass down. And go into the sheep farm. Why on earth is there snow everywhere in the sheep farm? This has rogue snow golem written all over it. Anyway, as I was saying before I had to clear everything up, 
Let's grab some lime wool, maybe not quite that much lime wool, make some carpets and decorate the floor a bit more. In the end, I've gone for this kind of carpet pattern. I think I'm just going to fill in the entire thing with light blue. And that is how each side is going to look. I don't think it looks too bad. It certainly looks better than it did before anyway. I'd also like to add a couple of ender chests up here just for a bit of decoration. In fact, they might look better if they're on top like that. You know what? Even better. What if they're right up there? Yeah, I like that. Better than them just randomly being to one side. Yeah, that doesn't really work. I would also like to decorate the floor down here. And I think carpet's probably not good enough. I think I'd like more emerald blocks. And the best place for emerald blocks will be the raid farm. So I'm going to fly to the portal that leads me to the stronghold and also pillager outpost. Let's just say the portal room's through there. But if I instead go this way, and I'll have you know I've never got lost yet. Okay, that was actually... <laughs> that was not doing that on purpose, guys. But yeah, this is the right way. Here's a captain that I saved earlier. In fact, you're not even a captain, so you can just be gotten rid of. And now we fly to the raid farm, where I can begin collecting all of those emeralds. Plenty of time has been spent here, and a milestone of 400 XP levels has been reached. And if it's emeralds that I wanted, it's emeralds that I've got. Now to start emptying these shulker boxes and turning them into blocks. That is all of them crafted, and we have one entire shulker box of blocks. And all these other shulker boxes can be gathered up and put back into the system. Now with these emerald blocks, I wish to make some sort of floor pathway. I'm pretty sure that's symmetrical. It took me about a minute to work it out. And I can fill these in with emerald blocks instead. And you know what I've learned from this? That emerald blocks just, just don't work in that situation. Instead, I'm going to head back to my house and all the way down to the storage room so I can grab some black dye, or at least some wither roses to make black dye. And then I'm going to fly all the way over to the Guardian Farm. And whilst I'm flying over there, I'm now asking myself the question, has this ruined portal been searched? I'll grab the gold box so that I know for next time it definitely has. And I can't seem to spot a chest. Okay, that's that's a new one. Either I've broken that chest in the past, or I've just been completely scammed. I also had to do a bit of searching, but I finally found the Guardian Farm, only to realize, yeah, I, I didn't turn on the mob switch. Hopefully, there is going to be plenty of Prismarine already there. And the answer is, there's a few. That might just be enough. Actually, I go so far as to say that there's loads. More than enough for me to do what I need to do. That's why I brought an entire shulker box with the roses, because run out of die, we can just make more. And all this dark Prismarine should be more than enough. And I might as well just head back home by going through the nether. And now that that's sorted, let's get back to work on doing the bottom of this palace. So dark Prismarine like this. Which definitely does suit better than Emerald Blocks, but we can add a bit of decoration in there. I also want to mine up both of these because this is also going to be turning into Dark Prismarine. Of course, I've lost a door underground, but <laughs> I'm going to have to go on down. And whilst I'm here, I can actually go ahead and if I can if I just reach, I can go and do that. This is a nice bit of extra underground work. And I also think it'd be good to just mine out underneath the fences and again, place some emerald blocks. I mean, I did take the time to make a farm that would get me millions of them. <laughs> I might as well make use of that. Now, can I create some sort of floor pattern by using these lights? Well, you know me, I'll try anything once. Whether it actually works, though, will remain to be seen. Alrighty, this is what I've come up with. And I tell you what, I like it. I think it, it brings a bit of something to it. But I also reckon I can make it look even better. And the way to do that will be by getting a load of green stained glass, which I'm going to have to craft. You know what? Do I craft a load of stuff? I don't want to do craft too much. Don't want to go over the top. We have also got loads and loads of green dye here. So we'll just go and craft as much of it as we can. Yeah, that's going to be plenty. And then I'm going to redo all of these blocks to be one block lower, which shouldn't be too difficult. I'll just do something like this. Probably the lights that are the most annoying one to move down. So I've got to break each and every one manually like that and do that and replace it all manually to light it up. But despite that, it is slowly but surely coming together. Now it's all been moved down one block, I do believe. All I need to do is just try and get out of here, which is a Okay, I didn't mean to break that many blocks. Now that I'm out of here, I want to get inside out of this horrible rain and mine away at this floor. And this is what we've gotten out of. It's not quite finished yet, since I firstly want to cover it in green stained glass, which I have now successfully done. Next, I'm going to take this dark prismarine and create a bunch of stairs, mine a border all the way around the outside, and then use these stairs to go all the way around the outside. Will this work? Will it look good? <laughs> Only time is going to tell with this one. And there we go. What do we reckon? You know what? I like it. And I like it enough to do the exact same thing on this side. Although before I actually finish it, I definitely think that I won't quite have enough Dark Prismarine to do everything. And even though I've already made one trip to the Guardian Farm, I'm going to grab a Shulker Box, head to spawn, so that I can actually remember to turn off the mob switch this time. And then I will make the journey... <laughs> Not into the lava, but all the way over to the Guardian Farm. Where this time, Guardians will actually start spawning. Plenty of time has now passed. I think we're going to see what we've got. We've got plenty more Prismarine shards. That's what we've got. And for now, that should be all of the dark Prismarine that I need. I'm going to use a stone cutter to make the stairs because it's actually much more efficient. And now I'm going to get to work on doing this part of the floor.
And that's this floor complete. I decided to try it with normal glass to see if it looked better than the other side, but I do think that green stained glass looks much, much better. It looks like I get the very fun task of just breaking all of this glass now and place the green glass all back down. And there we go. I think I'm pretty happy with all of the floor designs, although a border around the edge of emeralds might look pretty good if I do something like that. Yeah, I think I like that. It adds a bit more extra colour. Reminds everyone that this is an emerald palace. So we're going to carry on mining out a trench around here and then it can be filled in with emerald blocks. So yeah, I really like that. I don't think it would make sense to have it go all the way to the door. Before I forget, I do want to mine into the floor patch it up and collect up all the concrete that I mined up because I don't want to waste it. A lot of it took me a lot of effort to get. I think it's worthwhile just nipping back home so that I can drop off all of this stuff. And now I'd like to grab loads and loads of different job site blocks. I do want some brood stands, but apparently we need blaze rods. And something tells me the blaze farm will be the best place to get those. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it does work. None of them are waiting for me. Let's just wait for them to spawn and then take them out. I've got seven from that. It, it is enough, really. You know what? I'll get you as well. I'm not going to leave you behind. Now I've got ten. That is definitely enough. And you know what? I might as well take on some stray blaze as well whilst I'm at it. Turns out I had plenty of blaze rods in this barrel. You, you, know, you know, next time I should probably just look. But not to worry. I can now craft my brewing stands. Took quite a bit of time, but I have now got every single job site block, which in theory should keep all of these villagers very happy and very busy. And the plan is to just put them all in a row along here, like so. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Because I have an odd number of job site blocks, but an even number on the wall, that's why the brewing stand is going there. I'm not going to bother putting them in the exact same order as the other side. You know, we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. There we go. That's all of those done. I also wouldn't mind just quickly nipping home, grabbing six more blaze rods and 18 cobble so that I can craft six more brewing stands. Why do I want six more brewing stands? I just feel like they just didn't make sense, you know, just to have one on each side. You know what I mean? Just th those one on each side when there was equal spaces in all the areas. So instead, I'm thinking, yeah, we've got one there. But why don't we also put one there? And then on this side, we could also have one here, one here. And then do the exact same thing on this side. Both on there and both on... Well, not both on that one. <laughs> that one's already there. And I really can't think what else could be done. I, I think I I'm ready to just extend this fence. Which probably involves me going back to my house to grab a load more spruce fences so that I can extend extend it properly and safely. And when I say safely, I mean safely for the villagers, you know. <laughs> it's not like the most dangerous thing in the world, placing fences. But if I get this wrong for the villagers, it could be a matter of life and death. There we go, that's up to that wall. I should probably fence off this cave because I, I really don't want them disappearing down here. Or down here, you know what villagers are like, they love wandering off. There we go, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on the other side of that, you'd be like you'd be in prison. But on this side, there's no problem whatsoever. I'm also going to extend this fence right here to go with, yep, you guys, you're going to be getting out real soon. They've literally spent their entire life living in a tiny water pool. Maybe I am the real monster of this place. So I think it's ready, I don't know what could possibly go wrong. Let's first get rid of the old fence, and then we can let all these villagers go free. There we go, guys. You're finally allowed out. Now then, who's the first one? Is anybody going for it? Come on, mate. You know you want to. So far, they just look like they all want to get me. No, leave me alone, guys. That's it. So far, none of them have worked out where to go. Maybe I need to open the door for them or something. I don't know how smart their brains are for pathfinding. And while I wait for them for, to actually use the Emerald Palace, I can get rid of this wall here as well. And I'm even getting a few extra Emerald Blocks from this as well. I literally mined the entire floor of my house when I had spare Emeralds just sitting here. Right. Oh, I am so sorry. That was an accident, mate. Don't run. I'm sorry. I built you a big house. Just want to mine up these spinning tables. And they too can be placed in this house to hopefully lure them over. I'm guessing the reason this hasn't been the grand opening I was hoping for is because you guys are just all having a big meeting at centre. This guy looks determined to go in there. Look, if I if I mine this, what do you reckon? He's they see, why do you want to go in there? It's, it's really nothing to say. Like, now we know. No, look, look mate, they, trust me, there's nothing to say. Guys, I know some of you want to go to bed. There's loads of beds up there. It's entirely possible that this is a, bit, a bit too far away from the village. But one way or another, I will get them here. All right, guys, if you come this way, there's an entire world waiting for you. That's it, villager. You fall for my trap. Yes, you might think you're here for a job. But no, you're going to be working in here. Welcome to your new home, you are the first villager. And he's got a job. There you go, happy days. Right, mate, I, I don't want to be horrible to you, but you're staying here for now. Look at that. They're all coming in now, but they're all getting the idea. Really brings a tear to my eye to see them finally using this place. And because this villager right here was the very first one to enter, you shall become the Emerald Leader. Congratulations, mate. Enjoy your position. Alrighty. Your brain's really got you through this time. Meanwhile, these stupid villagers can't even work out how to use a front door. Not to worry, though. I've got more important things to be cracking on with, such as my new and improved improved bartering farm. And the reason that it's going to be new and improved is because it's going to involve update suppression. All the items that I'll need for it are right there. However, it would also be useful to have even more powered rails. So I'm going to grab all these ones that I've placed 
for the evokers. Grabbing the powered rails is pretty straightforward. It's picking up the levers that's quite annoying, so I, I might even just leave those behind. Although it's weird to explain it, but I feel like if I leave the levers, I'm kind of like littering, if you know, <laughs> littering in Minecraft, I know. And you should never litter in real life or in Minecraft, so we're taking the levers with us. Well, I've made it back to the first portal, which is a good sign. I've nearly filled this shulker box up with rails. So you know what? I'll leave all of those behind to be collected another day. And now I'm going to go ahead and start building the update suppressor inside the massive perimeter. And you know what? Because you've seen me build these loads of times before, you can have a time lapse. And the entire update suppressor has now been built. The only thing I have realized is that I want the slice portal to be more over in this direction, but I, I built it in the wrong place. So instead, I'm going to extend this end bit over this direction a bit more. I'm hoping doing something like this will work. Only one way to find out. <laughs> no, it didn't. And after a few more attempts and adjustments, it's, it's now sorted. And whilst I've been building this update suppressor, I have been getting gold. As you can see, there's, <laughs> there's loads of nuggets in here. But very annoyingly, I don't have any obsidian to build a portal, and I don't have any ender chests. So I think it's important that I solve that problem. And the way I shall do that is by grabbing a bunch of obsidian, as well as eyes of ender, and then crafting plenty more ender chests. In fact, I'm just going to grab a little bit extra obsidian from here as well, because there's plenty more uh, ender chests that I can be crafted. So there we go, got 44. That should be enough. Let's get back to work. So right here, I am going to build the portal. I'm hoping it'll work if I do it right here. Then I light it up, and I think if I break this piece of obsidian... There we go, we've got a little one by one. All of the obsidian around it can be broken. And then in order to break the obsidian below, it, I just need to move this down a block. I'm hoping that this will still work. Let's just do that. And okay, yeah, the, the update suppressor is no longer working. Maybe if I move this to here, it should now do it. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. It's working. And if all goes to plan, I can break this piece of obsidian. <laughs> there we go. We've got a little one by one portal. And I cannot place any blocks on any of these four edges of it. Otherwise, it will break. Well, that is mission accomplished. This update suppressor can be taken down. I've said it before and I'll say it again. These suppressors take an hour to build and five minutes to destroy. And that is everything collected up. The next thing to be done is make a portal that perfectly connects to this one. And as I'm building this, it does make me realize that it's a completely pointless way of doing a bartering farm. Could have achieved all this just by keeping all the items in the same dimension. But I also think it's a really cool way to do it. Update suppression isn't going to be in the 1.19 update. So I'd like to use it whilst I still can. And now the slice portal on the other side needs to be right here. But you know what? It's going to be just too much effort to build it underground. And we have to dig out a massive area to build the update suppressor. So I'll just build it somewhere up here. So the other suppressor is going to be built right here. I just need to clear out some leaves. And it probably makes the most sense to use shears to do that. And from what I can tell, the entirety of this tree is in the way, so it's all got to go. I mean, I know if I just mine up the wood, it will disappear on its own, but I'm kind of trying to give it a bit of a helping hand as well. Shame I don't really have any storage. I think I think we need to store some of this stuff. It could all come in useful one day. Just got no idea when that day will be. That should give me enough space to do the building, so now it's time to get to work. And of course, as soon as I start building, it starts raining. I, I hate building in the rain. But oh well, it looks like I'm just going to have to power on through. And that is update suppressor number two complete. Let's turn it on. I believe we are now update suppressing. Right here is going to be the portal block that's going to be staying. So we're just going to go like this. Apparently I'm not update suppressing. Okay, now we are. And next I shall light the portal break this block right here and then all the blocks around it and i need to do the same thing as before to be able to break the obsidian great in something like this suppressing it all and mining it up now just to double check let's head on through and make sure it works and look at that straight through okay we fell down but we went through that one that means i can go back through this one and begin removing this update suppressor and i think everything has now <laughs> been destroyed so now i can go back through this portal and head back home to get some more items and the main item i'm going to need to get is going to involve me crafting crafting a lectern. There we go. And whilst I'm out and about, I'm also going to grab a bunch of emerald blocks. You see, my pickaxe needs repairing, and I could go out and use an XP farm. And oh my goodness, what has happened to you guys? I guess that's why you should never leave the door open. Change of plan, <laughs> we need to do some brewing. Using a couple of spider eyes, I should be able to get the weakness. Then I can make it splash with gunpowder. And whilst I'm waiting for that, if I head on down, I can grab a bunch of golden apples from here. I didn't expect to be doing this today, but hey, at least it'll get me better trades in the future. Let's grab all of these, do some splashing, and whilst I wait for that, I can trade with you guys. I know I have a raid farm, so I don't really need to buy redstone, but I also have way more emeralds than I know what to do with. Now let's head on down here to the trading hall, which is, it's, it's still a bit of a work in progress, guys. But despite that, I need to get a curse of binding book from this fella right here. Oh my goodness, I got it first time. I got it first. Oh my word. You know what? That's the best RNG I've ever seen in my life. You sir really are 
an amazing villager. Well, it's nice to see that one of the bits that I thought was going to be the hardest was, was very, very easy. All of these can go into a shulker box for now. I'm also going to need to come down here to purchase a load of name tags. I can buy loads from you guys. You know, I, you, you want me to buy more? Is that, don't worry, I'll buy loads from you. Hold them for different prices. Don't, don't worry, I've got plenty more emeralds. I'm, I'm stinking rich, mate. The economy, you, you guys... You don't stand a chance. I've got over a stack of them. I, I think that should be enough. Glad to see all of you guys looking much, much better. Let's buy loads and loads more redstone. And my pickaxe is nearly being fully mended as well. Well, as we said, this trading session has been very successful indeed. Having unlimited emeralds really is the best thing ever. And speaking of having unlimited emeralds, I'd like to spend even more of them to get loads more books. And this time, I'm going to actually remember to close the door. And you're probably now wondering, what is the next phase in my plan to do this fancy bartering farm? Well, we're going to be moving on to what I like to call... The annoying phase. Why is it called the annoying phase? Well, that's because I'm going to need to get hold of loads and loads of piglins. And then not only do I have to find them all, I've got to lure them right here. Now, we're not in the right biome for piglins to spawn, so I've, I've, I've got to go and find that first. And it looks like this is the nearest crimson forest. And so I'm going to build a platform in this biome right here. I reckon all the way up here should be high enough. I don't seem to have any gold armor, so I think I'm going to have to go into this treasure shulker box, grab a few pieces of gold, and create a gold helmet from that. That's just going to make the piglins be nice to me, because I, I can't be bothered to deal with them any other way. This is the size of the platform, a pretty big one. And I also really don't want hoglids to spawn, so I've got a plan to stop them. Hello, little fella. You're uh, welcome, welcome up here. To be honest, mate, you're no use to me, though. Yeah, I need adults, not, not children. Anyway, as I was saying, I do not want hoglings to spawn, so the way I'm going to get around that is by grabbing some glass and placing it like this, because hoglings need more than one block to spawn, so they won't be able to. Well, I, I was trying to tell you guys they can't spawn. Yeah, on the bits that I haven't placed the glass, they can, though. Foiled again by those beasts. Okay, mate, you're kind of getting in the way now. Let's see, you, you go over there. Oh, my goodness! You! No! <laughs> Why did he walk off? I was actually planning to murder him because he, he's not supposed to be able to. I mean, I, definitely not. But then he accidentally walked off. I tell you, being you know, 100 blocks in the air is not the safest place. There's definitely too many hoglings starting to spawn. I, I should be placing the glass. At least this gives me a bit of extra food. All right, little fella. I know you like it up here. I know it's fun. Try not to walk off. But apparently baby piglings have a habit of doing that. Aha! <laughs> get spleefed. I may have the most powerful netherite tools that you can get. But sometimes you just... Just got to outsmart him. And the piglin farm is pretty much complete. I just need to place these final bits of glass. All right, guys, there's, <laughs> there's loads of you up here. And I'll be honest, I don't really have a good plan on how to get them all to the bartering place. Oh, my goodness. Oh, now you're all angry at me. Oh, dear. I completely forgot how protective they get over enter chests. So for this, I am going to need a lot of boats. I'll craft a few right now and start collecting piglins. Yeah, I have no real plan other than just sending them over the edge. Got a pretty good system for sending them off. I just, I just go like that. They go spiraling down on a terrifying experience and I just stay up here. I'm also only choosing piglins with swords, not crossbows. That way I don't have to worry about them accidentally damaging each other. If you think I'm going to one by one boat them all the way to the bartering farm, you've, you've got another thing coming. And I've now got... 24 piglins, which is all the ones that I really need. If I try to put more than that in a one by one, they'll start entity cramming. I could use vines, but it, ju it just overcomplicates everything. So the next thing to do is make loads and loads of leather boots. Why do I need leather boots? You may be wondering. Well, all will become clear. We're going to be putting cursor binding on all of them, which is really going to make a big dent on my XP levels. But that is where powdered snow will be coming in. I'm going to grab a single bucket of that. As you can see, I have plenty there. I did unfortunately break an anvil, and this one is very close to being broken. You just can't see it. So let's grab the items to craft a new one like so and I can go back under there. It's not like I'm struggling for iron or anything like that, is it? So I've got all the boots. I've got the powdered snow. Let's go back to the piglins. Now if I mess this bit up, it will uh, it will break the slice portal. But we're going to have powdered snow right here. There we go. That works fine. And then all around it like so. Now me, because I don't have any, any leather boots on, I'd fall right through this. And that is what's going to happen to all the items that the piglins barter. But because they'll be wearing leather boots, they won't fall through. And the reason all the boots have curse of binding is otherwise the piglins will decide to upgrade to the iron boots when they barter those. I got this design from Not J Hill, and whilst it is a bit more complicated than it needs to be, it's also a very cool way to do it. And I'm also making a nice safe chute for the piglins to fall down so that I can safely lure them all the way to this hole. I've no idea how well this is going to work, but I'm, I'm hoping for the best. In order for this to go as smoothly as possible, I'm also going to use armor that doesn't have thorns on it. But it's still the very, very OP armor. And now I'm going to start supplying you guys with your very own new and improved boots. Go on, put them on. Don't, don't be shy. There we go. He's got them. And don't they just look great, all right? You're, you're all getting a pair. And since I don't want you to despawn, I'm also going to give you guys name tags. Let's let him out of the boat. Okay, guys, welcome. <laughs> welcome out of this. Of course, he just walked into another boat, and they're really hard to get out when there's two of them. Okay, you know what? Let's just learn one one guy, all right? 
Just one of you, okay? Let's see if this all works. Look, mate, I, I put the gold helmet on. Why are you still mad? There we go. He's calmed down now. He really is just going to wander off into the void of nothingness. Don't worry, mate. I've got a place for you to go. Just need you to walk down here. Stop being so good at pathfinding. Come on. That's it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, and I've got no... Uh, <laughs> I forgot I have... Yeah, let's just do that. There we go. You're, you're trapped. And we push you down there. All right, see you later, buddy. I'll be back when I've got more of these guys. I'm gonna try and use hitboxes so I don't actually hit the piglins, I think. Yeah, that works. There we go. Let's, let's get you out of there. That's it, right. You guys, follow me. That's it, two of you. Come on in, fellas. <laughs> there we go. You in as well. And you two can be sent down the ladder. I realize that getting them to go all the way to the bottom of a ladder is a bit of a nightmare. I mean, look at them. They've managed to climb all the way up to the top. What's that all about? So I didn't want to have to do this, but it's, <laughs> it's time for plan B. And what is plan B? You may be wondering. Well, I'm going to go to my chest room, grab some slime blocks, and also a single piece of glowstone so a mob can't spawn on the slime block. A little bit of a risk, but I'm going to try and lure five of them in one go okay <laughs> they're all currently chasing me okay this is why i've got the good armor on though there we go let's just keep moving also for some reason these two don't seem to care about me guys you need to be angry come on all right fellas <laughs> catch me if you can now this bit is going to be a little bit more tricky than uh, than the other times oh and there goes a totem all right now i've got to be really careful all right we don't want to do anything particularly stupid here <laughs> otherwise this will be the end of sp737's hardcore world so we don't we don't want that to happen turns out just standing up here was the easiest way to do it anyway let's put some a gold helmet back on so that they are no longer angry and i'm going to move away a little bit and open an ender chest and with that i can get myself a, another totem three in one episode what's been going on today and i can hopefully float down this ladder if i can if i can get past these guys anyway there we go i got down somehow i don't know how i did it but <laughs> anyway we're past all the way at the bottom we're going to change this glass to instead be a slime block. Let's put a bit of glowstone next to that for safety. Then I'm going to attempt to break all the ladders. I think doing it like that might be the best option. Oh, they're going. They're going past me now. <laughs> well, you guys ain't coming back up this. Whoa. Uh oh, I forgot about that. Some of you guys are... What do I do here? You know what? Let's put a slime block there. Just you and me, buddy. Don't walk into my axe. It will be painful for you. Now we've made it to the bottom. Am I going to get stuck here? Is a chance. Let's see. Can I break that? can. Yes, we're out. Okay, good stuff, guys. Welcome to the bottom. And you know how you guys like to get angry at me for absolutely no reason? Well, this is going to be one of those times. All right, fellas, straight in. That's it. Push it. Wait, you had leather boots. Why did he fall through the powdered snow? That guy's not coming back. I should have tested this properly. But it turns out that if they fall more than two blocks onto the powdered snow, they, they'll just go straight through. That poor piglin now, he's, he's, he's a gunner that's gone through there. But anyway, what's going to happen is if I go and mine away this. Yeah, once they're all there, I will mine this piece of glass and then they'll just all go on the snow. I guess this is why I should really test these kind of things. What about you? Are you you're not going to get mad? There we go. Now you guys just wait there. I've got to retrieve my boots from this piglin. Looks like the piglin didn't make it because, yeah, there's, there's actually nothing below here. So, yeah, I found the boots though. So, in my opinion... That was a successful mission. So now I have to fly up this chute. And when I get to the slime at the top, if I just break it, there we go. We should be pretty good. I can push these guys straight down. Now, I need to just check. Are we surviving at the bottom of here? Oh, look at that. We're having a good bounce and we're having no problem at all. That's good to see. All of them have been successfully sent down. So it's time to go and get more. I also need one of you guys because uh, yeah. <laughs> don't ask what happened to the last guy that uh, that you're replacing. You'll be fine. I mean, seriously, <laughs> what's the worst that could happen to him? All right, mate, here are your boots. You'll be named trader. And this time I'm going to really push the boat out and just bring all of them. Now, this guy already has some boots on. Are you going to upgrade? If you don't, you're staying here. You know, okay, that's it. You're, <laughs> you're going to go the same way the other guy did. Now, some of them are starting to wander off a little bit. So I'm thinking... We maybe just take what we've got and get out of here. All right, mate. There you go. You've seen... Whoa, they're everywhere. Let's release you as well. Oh, my goodness. I'm pretty low. There's an army of them after me. Now, have I got time to eat? Look at that. Loads of time to eat. That guy... The guys at the back are getting lost. Come on, guys. Don't lose focus. The finish line is in sight. And it seems the best way to do this is what I did before, just to build up a load of blocks. And they soon all just wander in. And I wonder if I just break this block here... Oh, that's it. All of you, just go down. That's it. You're all going on the slime. Just get ready for the ride of your life. I would go down there as well, but I feel like it's just going to be a bad idea. So I'm instead going to do something like... Oh, how are we going to do this now? If I go like that... No, that didn't work. <laughs> Take two. Nope, didn't work again. Different idea. We go like that. We place the block. There we go. We're going to fly on down. Yeah, so I kind of want to lure them from this side. All right, guys. Catch me if you can. Oh, my goodness. They're all coming this time. That's it. All going. You two as well. Oh, no. All right, Mr. Piglin, you are the final one. You guys sit tight. All right, I'll be back. Let's grab the rest of the boots. Now, I'm sorry to do this in front of you all, but this guy will not put the boots on, so he's he's got to go. And you, good sir, with the shiny sword, 
shall be his replacement. If you want to be, anyway. All right, we're going on down. Here's some boots, a name tag, and I give boots to all the rest of you. All of the boots have been distributed, and the boats are getting broken. And follow me, guys, to your brand new home. All right, fellas, in you go. That's all of them sent down. Now I'll join them down there and get them to come into the machine. That's it, fellas, all of you in. Hopefully, if I've done it correctly, when I break this glass, they'll all stand on the powdered snow. The moment of truth. There we go, look at that work. Don't know what I was afraid of, okay? Worked perfectly. All these extra bits of glass can be removed. You guys can be welcomed to your new home. All of the excess glass is now gone. So I think it's time to fly back home and get a bunch of blue ice and also some pistons. I don't know what to do with all the boats. So I'm just going to shove them into a shulker box and put them into a chest. I can also put my good old armor back on that has all of the fancy stuff. And the back of armor can go back into the shulker box. Pretty sure everything I need is right here. Except for one item that I need a lot more of. And to get it, we're going to be heading over over to the iceberg since it's pretty much the only place to get it it's the fastest way that i found to get it much faster than farming and crafting it anyway yes i have come to collect blue ice now is this blue ice or packed ice okay it's packed ice never mind that's what i'm looking for yes the blue ice i've already mined up quite a bit and there's another big deposit right here so once all of this has been mined up i'll probably have more than enough yeah i've got two stacks and four and i've also got a bit more packed ice which can be crafted to blue ice so yeah i've got i've got plenty first of all i'm going to build a blue ice pathway all the way to the piglins and I'm hoping that if gold lands here, they can grab it. I better just test it out. So if it's there, can they get it? Yes, they got it. Okay, what about if it's all the way over here, though? I guess they can't quite reach that. Oh, they can. Okay, perfect. So right here, I'll have a couple of pieces of obsidian. There's going to be a slime block on the end, and then I need an obsidian bit right here. I also need to spawn proof this blue ice before I forget. And I'm thinking if I do something like this, when I go ahead and stand there... Okay, it kind of works. Just needs a bit more delay on the repeater. And now if I was to throw items in... <laughs> I missed the string. Yeah, this, this isn't quite working. Instead, we go string, observer, and redstone like that. Throw the items at this angle, and they get sent off. Now, is it going to reach? Yes, they, they're bartering it. Okay, so I'm like, oh, I just want to barter my gold. That gets sent all the... Okay, yeah, that didn't work. It's gone down there. You can always tell when I'm making something up as I go along, because it always goes wrong a few times. But this time, when I send it through... Okay, it, it can get stuck. But in the end, I decide to completely change the design... And just use a lever. It's, it's, it's much, much easier and it works fine. And now that that's done, we need to go through this portal so that I can build the auto sorter on the other side. Probably going to be best if all of this floor is blue ice. And for this, I'm just going to have water like that, which is going to go all the way to the edge. And from here, it will hit a row of ender chests, which will make the items be aligned perfectly to go in the hoppers. I also want to grab myself. I'm trying to look for the walls. There we go. We've got the walls. They're going to come along here as well just to keep stuff like this water in place i went quite far in this direction then i realized that these chunks well this chunk here particularly wouldn't be loaded by that portal so i'm gonna have to mine these ones up and that's why i've instead decided to turn a corner let's add some more ender chests to this end and we'll continue with the walls and to separate the water so that you know it doesn't flow backwards we're just going to place some like that we're going to do the same thing here just so that it can go around the corner and with this one it should take us all the way to the end and i'm just gonna go back through my portal if that's even possible there we go did make it through and then i'll grab a single piece of magma which i'm gonna light on fire so that it burns all of the books the fire resistance and the boots so let's test it out with a bit of string okay it comes through the portal it goes through there it goes all the way around and look at the speed that it's going and then it gets burned. But to make sure that everything else doesn't get burned, <laughs> let's make the storage system. And to do that, it would actually be helpful if I had a load of blocks. So jungle wood is going to be the answer. These are just going to be temporary blocks all the way around the outside. And then I'll have hoppers pointing into those blocks. And these blocks can be removed and we can have blocks underneath instead. Which will have the comparators. You've already seen me in this episode build an auto sorter. So I'm just going to get on with it. Normally I wouldn't like to build with jungle wood. But <laughs> since we are in a jungle, I think it actually looks quite good. And this first half of the storage system is complete. Although I do want to just add an extra row of chests underneath just to make sure that I don't run out of space. And I'm now creating the floor that I shall stand on. Although to extend these extra chests out a bit more, I'm going to need more wood because we're, yeah, we're fresh out of chests. In fact, we have actually got more wood. Will it be enough to make the chest that I need? Not quite. So it looks like it's time to begin Project Deforestation. Although calling it Project Deforestation might be a slight overstatement considering I'm only mining one tree. I've got plenty more and for now it should hopefully be enough. And I think I might get rid of all these chests and hoppers right here so that I'll have room for the ones on this row. Because I'm not using that corner bit, I've had to extend this a little bit further. It is going to go into there. I don't want it to... Uh, well, I need to make sure I get that right. So I'll just, let, me, let me change this up. You know what? Forget it. I'll just put water there actually. That, that should work fine. And I'll throw a single plank down just to make sure that it does go all the way through. 
and get burnt. Once again, I'm going to need more chests and I'm also going to need a load of hoppers, which is why I'm going to keep mining up lots of wood. And all of a sudden, Project Deforestation is, <laughs> is actually becoming a deforestation. But as long as I've got enough resources to finish this build, I don't mind. Building is going well, but sadly I <laughs> didn't quite bring enough repeaters. But it's nothing to worry about because I can simply just head back home and craft plenty more repeaters. And they can all be placed down with the redstone on top. Next, I'm going to place blockers into each of the hoppers to filter the items. And once I add in these final chests, the full system is completely finished. The only other thing I really need is an easier way to get backwards and forwards because that, that portal's not very good. So I'm thinking I should make a portal right here. Let's light it up and then if I try and build one on this side that will correspond to it. Looks like right about here should be a good place. Let's spawn proof it with glass on top and see if it works. Okay, so it did bring me to this one here, and if I go back through, it also takes me to the correct one. Let's now check that these ones still work properly, and look at that, no problem whatsoever. And since this has all worked so well, I'm going to get rid of this tree, and also this tree up here, and then I'll build a massive glass platform that connects to that one. I think I got a little bit carried away in placing loads of glass, but all in all, I think it looks great. So let's go ahead and offload all of these items. And next I need to head to the old and inferior bartering farm, which is all the way up here, and grab a bunch of each item. Apparently I've got no crying obsidian and I've got no gravel, by the way, so... I'll have to sort that out in a moment. In fact, the easiest way for me to probably sort it is to just go into here and grab myself some gold and trade it to all of you guys. And from that, I got plenty of the gravel. Look at that, loads of it. And enough crying obsidian. All the rest of these items aren't going to be needed at the moment, so they can just head on through. Now to grab this shulker box of all the stuff, fly to the gold slash bartering farm. Now the items to these hoppers. This is also why I named the items, because I nuggets have to go through but they don't stack with the blockers. Just temporarily, I am going to turn off this fire and do a proper test on the bartering farm and hopefully see if it's working correctly. In here, I have loads and loads of gold, so let's just go and craft it all. And then I'm just gonna send it all through to them like this. It's all sat there ready. Click the lever. Okay, and it's gonna be sat there and they're just gonna start bartering it. And when they barter, look at that item. Yeah, okay, I thought, <laughs> I thought the items didn't go through for a second there, but they are all going through. Absolutely fine, look at that. It really is kind of cool to watch as it all just drops through. And I kind of want to see what's happening on the other side. If we can quickly... Will we be able to see any items come through? Probably not because, yeah, it's not, not going to work like that. They're not going to be bartering anymore. Maybe if I throw an item through like that, they'll, they'll trade and I can <laughs> load it. There we go, look at that. We can see it in action. So they are bartering as we go. And it looks like... Yeah, the only items that aren't getting sucked up are the books, fire resistance, and the boots. So I can actually set this back on fire because it is working as intended. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to put down loads of item frames, which will correspond to what is in each chest. They're all now set up. I have to say, I'm very proud of this bartering farm. And it is a really cool, meme way to do it as well, using slice portals. And those guys have still got loads more gold to barter. And as I'm studying, my gold farm is still working and getting me loads and loads of extra nuggets. Might as well craft all of these and send them across to the piglins. And for my next project, even though I am losing all my gold to those guys, I actually need quite a lot of gold. So I'm going to spend a bunch of time AFK at this farm so I can have enough gold for my next project. So quite a bit of time has passed. They may not look like there's not much in this chest, but that's because I have been trade uh, turning it all into gold blocks. I've also been bartering it with these guys. So if we go and send some of it down there, but I have realized in the bartering system that when he's at that corner, these guys on the left don't get it. So I need it to be on this near side. So I'm going to take all these gold blocks home with me, which will be very useful for the project. And then I want to get a block that's not a full one that can't be pushed by a piston. I'm thinking a grindstone might be the ideal one. There's my grindstone. But whether or not it's going to be the correct size remains to be seen. So my plan is to put the grindstone right there and throw gold like this. Then when I push it, okay... <laughs> <laughs> that did not work. I'll try putting the grindstone the other way, but it seems like that is that is not an answer to the problem. So it's back to the drawing board to try a different item. The grindstone was useless. I'm, I'm going to burn it in the lava. And rather than going all the way home, I'm going to make a little detour. A detour that takes me to a bastion. And out of this bastion, I want one very specific thing. A lantern. I reckon a lantern will solve my problem. And I didn't even have to go all the way back to my house for it. So if I place a lantern right here and then throw a bunch of items against it, like that. Oh, I don't want to pick them back up but anyway for de demonstration purposes there we go they get pushed all the way along and the piglins can grab them let's send the rest of the items down as well yep absolutely perfect that is problem solved i'm also curious to see how much stuff i've actually got at the bartering farm quartz is looking very healthy generally speaking it all just goes into the first chest 
lots of blackstone, which is great. Same for gravel. And the best thing is, I haven't even used up most of my gold, because obviously I've got that for another project. So I am very happy with this new farm. And you may be wondering, what on earth have I got all of this gold for? Well, it is going to be something to do with my next build. And for this next build, I'm going to need quite a few grey items. And I'm also going to need about six stacks of some coloured terracotta. I only have about five. Do I have any in here at all? Nope, I've got none. So that leaves me with only one option. To head all the way to the fortress farm, and then go through this portal, which takes me straight to a lush cave. And I would say that lush caves are the place for getting all the terracotta, but it would seem that I've already mined most of it up. Not to worry though, there's still quite a bit to be found over here. And I seem to have found an extra area of this cave as well, which has even more clay. I think the nearly six stacks that I've got should be enough. And I'm pretty sure if I dig in this direction, I should get back to the main cave. Hey, look at that, we found some more clay. And it's led to water. Yeah, it seems like that a lot of the time there is water above the clay. Oh my goodness, there's a creeper in here as well. <laughs> I think he blew up. So another one, what is going on? Yeah, things really are getting a bit crazy. I should just turn my mob switch back on. Here is my portal. And here are the furnaces ready to be filled with clay. Now let's make some cyan dye and then we can make loads of of cyan terracotta and there's a bunch of other gray and black blocks that i'm going to need for this build and since i am now going to be needing quite a bit of concrete that means that in order to craft it i will need gravel which we have enough of but also sand which we, we don't have enough of so let's grab a bunch of shulker boxes as well as some tnt and head to the desert to collect lots of sand pretty much just going to be continuing my massive destruction of the area by placing down lots of tnt in a row i've nearly got two shulker boxes worth of sand which in my opinion should be more than enough that should be all the gray concrete powder i need i believe i've already got white concrete right here and I will need some black concrete and also some black concrete powder and now with that I've got everything that I need so let's go ahead and get on with the building it's going to be on this mountain over here and before I start the sun is going down so I think I might make a really quick trip to spawn and get this mob switch turned back on I'm sick of having to deal with mobs all the time now sat on this mountain right here I want to have a giant SB737 statue let me take my helm off here you can see what I look like properly yeah this is this is what it's going to be looking like and I'm going to try and get a year to sit on this mountain. Should have more than enough items to do this. But it'll be very interesting to see how it looks at the end. It's really hard to differentiate all the different items in your inventory. But when you actually place them down, you can see there is a big difference. And right here, I'm just creating the actual feet. You know, we're going to start at the bottom, work our way up. Absolutely anything could happen with this one. But the good news is that it is kind of a mirror on each leg. So... I can kind of use the other one to help. This is what I've got so far with the bottom of the legs. And if I take off my armor, I can't really show you very well. But you can see, yeah, we're, we've got something like that. And then I'm going to try and add a bit of a bend in the knees now as we get a bit higher up. So I think I've sort of managed to do the top of the legs. What, what do we reckon? Yeah, it's, it, they look like knees to me if I've ever seen knees before. And I'm going to be trying to use the mountain to hide my terrible sculpting skills. Let's also change this stone to be dirt. I think it'll look a bit better. Oh, that, that's not what I wanted. I'll just nick a piece of dirt from here and... Uh, Stick it in the wall. And now I can begin building the torso. Better make sure I get that six pack in there. <laughs> no, not really. I've got a massive onesie on, so you'd never see the six pack that hides beneath it. And operation do my torso is now complete. Yeah, do you know what? It's starting to take shape. Although I think I should work on some arms. <laughs> it looks a little bit strange at the moment. And I'm sure they won't be too difficult to do. And that is shoulder number one complete. Let's look at it from a distance. You know what? I'll take it. It's... <laughs> you can't really see it for the beacons. But yeah, I think it looks like a good looking arm, you know. Like I say, the rest is still to come. It's not going to be the world's best building. Or should I say, it's not going to be the world's best build. But I'm going to do my best. And that is arm number two complete. Yeah, it's, it's definitely starting to take shape. Like, it's not a very 3D build. But Minecraft skins aren't aren't very 3D anyway, are they? Yeah, they're quite blocky. So you, you've got to expect this build to be a little bit blocky. I'm sure once I get my head added, it's going to look amazing i've got to use string there to hold up the concrete powder let's do the exact same thing on this side and add white concrete in the middle let's get the beak on the front oh. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty crooked beak if you ask me i'd like to think mine is a, a little straighter than that let's move that down to where it should be and fill all of that in along actually is that right i think this end one actually needs to be black concrete powder same on this side there we go if, if i'm unsure i just just gotta look at my face. And then I can go around the entire outside of this with grey wool, which is gonna kind of create the hoodie. You can't really see it with my helmet, but yeah, I've got a hoodie on. So let's bring that round like so. And now comes the fun part of adding my sunglasses. If I kind of go like that, do the same thing on this side. What do you reckon? How's it looking? I think they're looking good. We go like that. Should we get a little look at them? Oh yes, it's really coming together. Let's continue adding things on to the face. The top of the head is now complete. So yeah, it's, it's definitely looking good. I've just got to do the hood a little bit higher. And there we have it. The build is now complete. Although when I compare it to the top of my head and look at this one, I don't know, I almost feel like it looks a little bit flat. I think I'm just going to bring this front bit 
up one more layer. Something like this with wool all the way around the outside, but not like, you know what I mean? Kind of like gradually built up a little bit, so it's a little bit curved. And I reckon with that, we are definitely done. Yeah, I think, I think that looks better. Look at him. He's, he's sat on the mountain. Is the, uh, the big, the big penguin man himself sat on the mountain looking over the world. I'm actually really pleased with that. I think it, I think it looks good. I think I've, I think I've outdone myself there. But I'm not done just yet. Oh, no, no, no. You see, peasants would sit on a normal mountain, but I am no peasant. A player like me deserves to sit on only the very best of the mountains. So I will be sat on a mountain made of solid gold. Yeah, this might take some time and it's going to use up quite a lot of gold, but when it's complete, it will without a doubt be worth it. Well, hello, it is still early days. It is starting to come together. I will also need to add snow on top of all the gold as well, unless, unless the sky could do me a favour for once and, and snow when I actually want it to. But yeah, with snow on top, it does help it to look a little bit more natural. I've done a decent size area and I've still got loads of gold left, so I'm confident I can get this done. And after lots and lots of placing, I have now run out of blocks and perfect timing! I was about to say I'm going to have to cover it in snow, but... Well, the snow has come to do the job for me. Kind of difficult to see it properly through the snow, but you can see like most of the mountain is now covered in gold. I mean, it would be cool if I could do all of that mountain and all of it behind and stuff, but <laughs> that would take a lot of gold. And whilst I have got the farm for it, whether or not I have enough gold for that remains to be seen. So whilst it's snowing, I'm going to leave it to do that. And I'm going to grab a load of string from down here. Because whilst I do want all of the gold blocks to be covered in snow, I don't want my penguin to be covered in snow. No, he should not have snow on him at all. You know, my original plan for this was to actually build the statue out of gold. But after testing it out, it looked absolutely terrible, which is why I've decided to do it in my own original colours. But if anybody is a really, really good builder and can make a gold one, Feel free to tweet me a picture or something like that. And I believe that is all of the snow now dealt with. Oh, not quite. <laughs> it's going on my sunglasses. I don't know what it looks like. It looks like... I don't know. It looks like I've got grey hair or something. The term white eyebrows springs to mind. Yeah, we're not going with that. Let's put those... So we need it on... Yeah, basically all of the sunglasses. And now I think it's definitely uh, <laughs> completely snowproofed. I'm also going to add snow to all these areas that are underneath the penguin since they can't get snow on them. That includes this big area underneath the arm. And since the snow has done most of the work for me, I'm just going to do a few extra bits here and there. And all of the gold should more or less now be covered. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. I would like to add a few more gold blocks here and there. But to do that, I need more gold. Which means another trip to the gold farm is going to be necessary. Probably shouldn't have given so much of my gold to you guys. I could have used that to make a little more blocks, but anyway. Have we got any nuggets here? We've, oh, you know, we've got loads here already. That's fantastic. Loads of gold ready and waiting here for me, and I didn't even have to AFK for it. I think I'm now going to take all these nuggets and leave. I don't want to run out of time. We, we all know what happens when I go over time in this series. So for once, I'm, I'm actually going to try and finish on the day I'm supposed to. Let's use these 81 gold blocks that I've got to change a bit more of this mountain. And I have run out of gold blocks. That's as good as the gold mountain is going to get in this episode, but... Yeah, it does look pretty good. And oh, the sun is setting. I'd, I'd better get a move on. I just want to place down snow on top of all the gold blocks that I've placed. And there we go. That has been done successfully. And Penguin Mountain, which I am, I am sitting on, has now been completed. And I have to say, I really, really like it. Yeah, I think it looks good. I, I mean, it's not the greatest build I've ever done in me well, but it, yeah, you know what? It looks like he's sat on there. And the sun has now set on my world. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was 3,400 days in hardcore Minecraft.